Good evening, I'm Peggy Scott Laborde and welcome to Steppin' Out, spotlighting the New Orleans area's arts and entertainment scene. Seated at our table tonight, Bonnie Warren, author of the new book, New Orleans Historic Homes, published by Pelican. Good to see you. Hey, Thank Ms. You. Bonnie. Hello, Poppy Tooker, host of the weekly program, Louisiana Eats, statewide on WWNO Radio. And uh, which, which station is uh, Baton Rouge? WRKF and KRVS in Lafayette Lake Charles. All right. You can hear us from Border to board <laughs> if we like that. <laughs> Carnival historian Errol Laborde. Hey, Big E. Hello. And, of course, to give us his yearly Mardi Gras wrap-up. Good to see you, babe. Hi. And uh, Alan Smason, editor of the online Crescent City Jewish News. And later on in our program, performances by Leslie Keste and Jefferson Turner. Hi, y'all. Hey. <laughs> We're so excited. And she has a one-woman show this weekend we'll tell you about. But first up, it's Lent Pop. Oh, it's no! Oh, don't make a sad face, Peggy. No, I'm just kidding. In New Orleans, <laughs> Lent just yeah. continues to be a celebration. You just have to do it with seafood, and nobody does that celebration better than Tenny Flynn at GW Fins. It's really a little wonder that he's had all the recognition, won all the awards. He's doing incredible stuff. You are never going to find fresher fish because. That's why his menu changes daily. It's really what is the freshest and the best. And crudo is a kind of a raw fish dish that he serves, it's new on his menu with different garnishes. And raw definitely has to be fresh. So you can have scallops with caviar and truffle cream and yellowfin tuna with yuzu vinaigrette and wasabi, mm. And then when we move on to the entrees, I just hope Everybody's not too hungry at home, so I'm going to kill you now. Mm -hmm. How about flounder with jumbo lump crab meat? And jumbo oh, lump, oh they're gosh. really not kidding. Uh -huh. Asparagus, Meyer lemon, crispy capers, and brown butter. Then they have a dish they call scalibut. Now, it's not halibut. This is a GW Finn's original creation. And it's a halibut that's coated with slices of scallops, pan seared, and then served with lobster risotto and a lobster butter. And oh my goodness gracious, <sighs> that is what you call Lenten. Suffering. Then <laughs> something Mayor very culpa. <laughs> then something very unusual you don't see in other restaurants is snapper collar. Now Asian people have long, long prized these unique pieces of the fish, like fish cheeks. Well, you know, a snapper doesn't have too many collars, so there's not very many of those available every night. So try to pre-order or, or order early because it's very rare and it's really delicious wood grilled pompano with melon salsa and blue crab fritters and chili oil. And then just to show you how serious the fish situation is. Okay, that is a 127 pound swordfish that they recently had mm. in the restaurant. And that's a special cold table they butcher it on. And really that puts it in proportion. That is one of his chefs who does a lot of the, uh, a lot of the different butchery, um, Elise Colombo. So really, how about that swordfish? Mm. My goodness. Mm. Then I have to say, I love Dickie Brennan's Bourbon House. And it's really one of my very favorite oyster spots in the French Quarter. That's where I want to go for raw oysters. But new for Lent, they have a dish, Oysters Three Ways. And it's a bowl of chowder, three fresh shucked raw oysters, and a half a fried oyster poor boy. Yum! How good does that look for lunch? Mm. I would like that. And let me tempt you with a couple more delicious oyster offerings. They have an oyster bordelaise, which is flash baked in a Creole bordelaise sauce, and the trio of baked oysters, Rockefeller, Bienville, and Fonseca. Mmm! But then, true confessions, my favorite, favorite, favorite place to eat raw oysters I can't help it. It's Pascal Manali's, who are currently celebrating a hundred years on Isn't Napoleon that Avenue. It's great. It really is. It's it's actually one of the oldest continuously operated family owned by the same family restaurants in the city. And that's where barbecue shrimp were invented, so yum. And have the barbecue shrimp poor boy at lunch where there's no peeling involved, just the yummy shrimp with that delicious buttery sauce. And there's the oyster shrimp and crab pan roast, mm. which is just the most yummy casserole seafood thing you can imagine. And 
They're very open to suggestions. That's the pasta bordelaise. And they were perfectly willing to fry oysters and put it on top. <gasps> and boy, was that <laughs> good. <laughs> and you know, it's so easy to park, too. It's, they have a parking the lot. It's, yeah. And it's beautiful in there with those big windows looking out at the oak Poppy, trees. How's the oyster supply in town now? Are, 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 are they getting nice oysters? The oyster supply is really good. And I have to say, I have eaten we, we'll, we'll have to talk about the oyster supply and P&Js. I have a very funny story I'll tell you later. I'll <laughs> okay. tell everybody else soon. Okay. It has to do with my buddy at Mofo. All right. Thank you, Poppy. And we turn to Bonnie. And for how many years have you been doing the home section of New more Orleans than, Magazine? More than 45 years. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and so certainly that is, this book is an outgrowth of that. And it is. And, and I'm very proud that all of the houses in there have appeared in New Orleans Magazine. So New New Orleans so that's, Historic Homes. That's kind of the pick of the crop. Uh -huh. And the wonderful thing about it, that doesn't only include the grand mansions of the French of the French Quarter and the Garden District, but it is the little shotguns in 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 the Marigny or a little neighborhood that you may not have heard of. Well, we're going to show kind of a mix, and I, that's wonderful. what I like. You've got all different neighborhoods. All it doesn't have to be a fancy house. Right. But, but what intrigues you about a house? I, I know you choose carefully the homes that you do. What what intrigues you about a house? You know, yes, that's really right. The house on the screen right now is just a wonderful house. It's on Nashville Avenue, and uh, it's a cottage, and it, it's... I, I did that house many years ago, maybe even 35 years ago. And so you go back and visit it. Now an interior designer lives there. Now that's Kevin Kev Kelly's house. Fantastic Which is a, uh, a mansion. Uh, it was built as a mansion, became a flop house, and now it's a mansion again. Mm -hmm. And it is a fascinating place. So it's wide That is the bathroom of Kel and Dorian <laughs> Bennett. And that house is so exciting. It's in the bend of Bourbon Street. Well, that was Terry Fletcher's old house, It was Terry Fletcher's old house. Yeah. And they have a marvelous art collection. There's not an inch on the wall. Is there a freer use of color in New Orleans? Is yes, there anything I, that you see that yes, you notice that makes you apart from other cities? The color, and that is one of my favorites. That's an artist, Michael Guidry's single shotgun, and it's in Pigeon Town. And he's catty corner across from a bar. And I said, oh, he said, don't call it a bar, Bonnie. It's a social club. <laughs> and he said, I like living here because at night they put out the uh, hardback uh, chairs and they sit out there and drink their beer and they watch my house. Don't you love <laughs> oh, the, dog the dog there? This yes. is a marvelous house in the Bywater. And Julie Jones, who's a retired professor, do you know, each house is wonderful. Look at those wonderful uh, yellow walls in her kitchen. Well, I know so, this was a very collaborative effort with uh, photographer oh, Cheryl wonderful Gerber. photographer. Mm -hmm. And here's Laura and Philip Clavery's home in the Garden District. It's so elegant. So you go from the Garden District to the Bywater, to Pigeon Town, and I love that. And of course, this is Gay Worth. She owns Worthmore uh, Antiques, and you couldn't find a more elegant garden district home. So I love the variety, and this has never been done, where you have a small house, and you have grand houses, and so I love that. Just whatever. And there are 41 houses. <laughs> That's a lot of That's houses. That's a lot of houses. Now, you've got a book signing coming up. A book signing uh, tomorrow from 1 to 3 at the Garden District Bookshop at the corner of Britannia and Washington. Please come yeah. out. <laughs> and I know you worked hard, hard, hard on this. It was wonderful. Congratulations to you and Cheryl. Congratulations. And moving on to Errol, the New Orleans Magazine side of the table on this one. Air, how was Mardi Gras? I mean, we know there was an obvious issue, but but let's let's kind of recap. First of all, I want to tell the audience that if Poppy tells me her PJ's oyster story, I'd be glad to share it with them. <laughs> and then, uh, I also want to tell you all, it's honored to meet you all, that you all have uh, in person um, look younger and beautiful and thinner than even in real life uh, on TV. So that's uh, 
You know, Mardi Gras reminds me, you know, during the carnival season, we had the Winter Olympics, and I remember watching a ski event where they had this guy, he was leading all the way until, until the very end, and then he fell and just right, right before the finish line. And I think that's what happened to our carnival season. It fell right before the finish line, uh, that being Mardi Gras day, just that terrible weather, the, the, the terrible weather. You know, I've known cold Mardi Gras, I've known rainy Mardi Gras. I, I don't know if I've known the cold and rainy Mardi Gras. Yeah. And it was heartbreaking that day, especially. But we still have some pictures from it, it before was, that. Uh, the, the day itself was was, was yeah. bad, but there are a lot of things that happened during, uh, during the season, and we, we want to show that. Uh, first of all, in the crew of Muses, which is always one of the, the, the favorites, uh, Muses had a great uh, innovation, and that is an all-female flambeau group called the Glambo. <laughs> and there's a new generation of the actual flambeau. They're lighter weight. And this group did a good job, and I, I love this. I love the idea of people carrying torches in parades. Uh, you know, there's been social issues with that in the past. It doesn't matter to me who carries them, okay, in terms of race, or gender, or anything else. But I thought they did a great job, and it was a great innovation, and I hope they, they bring it back. This is uh, Le Cru d'Etat. Uh, this was actually taken in the den. Le Cru d'Etat actually had one float that, uh, you know, they do satire. And among the, the many satirical things they did, one poked fun at Canada. The Toronto newspaper picked it up because they, they, it poked fun at the mayor there. It went all over Canada the next day about this parade. <laughs> and so it got... Um, it got national ex exposure in, in another nation, but they, as usual, they did good biting satire. And that one, of course, is a Katrina and Katrina coverage too. Yes. Right. This is the uh, the Mid City Parade. The Mid City Parade, which is always a beautiful parade, the only parade that's built entirely out of foil uh, in terms of the floats, and they did Fifty Shades of Green. <laughs> and, uh, and what a great idea! And this is about artistry. This really is. And that's a that's an idea of what they of what they can do. It's always a really really pretty parade. And look how that foil uh, reflects the sun. And unfortunately, that Sunday, there was still, uh, there was still sun. Mm -hmm. uh, next, we have Bacchus, and that's uh, Hugh Laurie. Uh, where I was, there was this lady who came up to me, and she said, has house passed yet? OK. <laughs> and, uh, and I had to think a moment for a second if they were moving uh, homes in the neighborhood. Okay. I'll go see him. So he loves anyway. the city so, too. Mm -hmm. But he seemed to have performed well. well. The crew of Proteus is just a beautiful knockout parade. And this is a, a, a traditional one. This is sort of a history of alchemy. And they just did a beautiful job, just great flows, great design. I always say, look at Proteus as historic preservation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, 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 it's a beautiful float. And they're really being faithful to the tradition. This is at Lundigrand, uh, which is now at the place now called the Alta Collection at, at Riverwalk. And this is the mayor and Rex about to push down the plunger, uh, which ignites the fireworks over Carnival. And Beautiful it, display I saw, too. It was. And right before that, you can kind of see in the background, you see us behind Landrew's head, that feathery uh, crown, that's Zulu. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, we don't okay. have a, a better and so, uh, picture. But look at what you got there. On one setting, you have Rex, Zulu, and the mayor uh, all, all together and all igniting the fireworks from Mardi Gras. That's, that's a beautiful shot. The mayor looks ex as excited as a kid, doesn't he? <laughs> I mean, he looks like he he's was. 12. He was excited. <laughs> and he's the only guy I know who enjoyed the next day because uh, he got up early, he rode a horse in Zulu, wow. saw Rex, got to go home early because of <laughs> Okay, this is, this is at the Royal Run, which is on the morning of Mardi Gras. The man with the top hat is Bolton oh. O'Reilly, who was Rex in 1982, and who started the Royal Run the year he was Rex. Uh, the woman to the far left of the screen uh, was, uh, was this Irene, year's queen. Yeah, oh. Carol right. Gelderman, uh, Carol uh, Irene Gelderman. And that's her mama right next to Bolton, right. uh, and then her mama's sister, because they sure look alike, don't yeah, they? they do. But I love the photo, yeah. just to chime in here, mm -hmm. Ed, the photo is of Boatner um, in jogging, because he was quite the jogger, and I mm -hmm. think he ran many marathons. So that's what the photo that they're wearing yeah, they're on the yeah. Sure now, now Bogdan Riley's <laughs> queen was yes. this year's queen's mother, okay? Mm -hmm. yes. And so the woman to his Catherine left Coulter, uh, yeah, was Gilbert. queen the year uh -huh. that Bogdan Riley was queen. That was the first year of the royal run. By tradition, the queen is always the winner, which is significant <laughs> because in, in the first year, the queen didn't even participate, but she is kind of like the winner in retrospect, okay? And then this is just, I think, the heartbreak of Mardi Gras Day. Yeah. Always, no matter what's going on, the epicenter of activity is Jackson Square, and I'm always worried I'm gonna be, be missing something. So I guess this was around two o'clock in the afternoon at Jackson Square, and when I saw that Jackson Square looked like this, I realized I wasn't missing anything anywhere else. Yeah. But as you said, 
but the spirit was the spirit was certainly there. Absolutely, and we want to mention though we were very privileged to WYES to present to you live the complete Rex Ball and the meeting of the courts of Rex and Comus, and we like to show you just a, a clip from the meeting of the courts itself. And our thanks to Dr. Stephen Hales, who was with us, one of our co-anchors. But now let's show you a glimpse of the meeting of the courts. Getting ready for the meeting of the courts of Rex and the Mystic Crew of Comus. Pauline Ucrop, Pauline Mason Ucrop, Carol Gelderman, our Queens. And this is the meeting of the courts. Hail Rex, hail Comus. Captain is in charge. And the Queen of Carnival is being escorted to one side of the dance floor. And she'll be joined by Comus himself shortly for the Grand March. such a great Rex. And just a reminder that the DVD of the 2014 Rex Ball and Meeting of the Courts will be available by calling 486-7311 or going online to WYS.org. Click on shop. And we also want to thank uh, Justin Winston and, and Jay Richard for some of the photos that we just showed as well. Now, though, we are so delighted because Leslie Caste uh, and Jefferson Turner, who will be performing, Leslie is doing Leslie Caste Unscripted, a one-woman show. And we're going to show you the information on that. It's uh, Friday night, but also Saturday night at the Mid-City Theater. Do not miss this. <laughs> Here we go. So Saturday night and Mid-City Theater is right, uh, of course, right behind American Can Company. But Leslie, tell us a little bit about your show. And then I know you'll be singing for us, too. Thank you both. Thank you, Peggy. Yes, uh, my show, Leslie Caste Unscripted, is about those sort of unscripted moments in all of our lives. And it sort of traces my long and winding road from growing Growing up in Laplace, Louisiana, the Antui capital of the world, <laughs> 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 to uh, yeah, moving to New York and to appearing on Broadway several times, and then the twists and turns that took me back to New Orleans with my family. So, uh, and we'll I hear sing a, what a little bit of what maybe um, Gershwin and Cole Porter. And I do a little like bit that. Gershwin, Cole Porter, Stephen Sondheim, uh, all the great contemporary composers of today, even a song by Sting. So I cover a wide range of uh, musical styles. And this song I'm going to sing to you today is, a, is, is one of my favorite cabaret anthems written by David Freeman. It's, um, the title is Listen to My Heart. And I sing it at a point in the show when I was sort of through with love, through with my love life. And then all of a sudden, I met my husband and fell in love for real. All my life, I've been on a road going one way. Dream the road would wind, and down it I would go, always searching, never finding. But even in my darkest hour, I always knew that someday, somehow, the road would lead to you. And to my heart listen to it sing listen to my voice it wants to tell you everything listen to my song listen to it so i've waited all my life for this one moment i'm not waiting Here. 
And we'll be hearing more from them in just a little while. Once again, Saturday night, this Saturday night at the Mid City Theater. And now on to Alan with lots of stuff. Well, the Mardi Gras recap for me is Errol himself alluded during the meeting of the courts last Tuesday night. There's much theater associated with Carnival. The very first Rex was robed in theatrical costuming borrowed from a famous Shakespearean actor. So it would make sense, of course, that for Fat Tuesday, I would find some theatrical connections. So here I am on the big day, braving the inclement weather in search of theater, of course. <laughs> Yes, a cowboy is what I chose to be, and if I'd had a set of chaps to wear, I would have. Okay, <laughs> on Saturday, the crew of Iris Parade. I was pleased to narrate that at Gallia Hall. Before that, there is the cast of And the Ball and All by Ricky Graham. From left, there was Heidi Junius, who was subbing for Mandy Zirkenbach, Michael, uh, Michael rather, uh, Becky Allen, Tracy Collins, Patrick Mendelson, Brian Johnson, Lisa Picconi, and Gogo Borgetting, and they had a blast. And while we were waiting for the cast to pass Gallia Hall, who was there but our own Honorable Mitch Land Andrew, our mayor, who stopped by in a very relaxed manner to say hello to the ladies of the goddess of the Rado, rainbow, uh, Iris. And, and again, also watching with the mirror, if you'll notice, there was Andy Garcia, the Hollywood hunk wow. himself. <laughs> so fast forward past uh, to a busy Sunday, which we had with Okeanos and Mid-City and Toth. I took a breather to take in the Orpheus escapade on Lundy Gras at the Ernest Morial Convention Center. The Orpheus Parade was led by <laughs> Captain Sonny Bory, who we see here with none other than David Hoover, the UNO film and theater department chair and well-known actor and director. Riding in Orpheus and coming back home from Florida were Barbara Ann and Rose Lee Hawkins, two-thirds of the members of the Dixie Cup. So they were glad to be back in New Orleans. They now live in Tampa, Florida, believe it or not. Also at the Orpheus Capade were actress Catherine Talbot and her friend Donna Ponce, who once played Maggie the Cat opposite her husband, who is the float builder, Manuel Ponce, and he played Brick. Now, that's coincidental to the fact that Damon Singleton there, the WDSU meteorologist, just played Brick in a production of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Also there was Chris Maroy and Becca Chapman from Elm Theater, and they were there with Dane Rhodes, the wonderful actor, and uh, he's, of course, uh, taking a breather from some film work he's been doing. And then, of course, it was Fat Tuesday, and two of the sightings I had were with Marie Lovejoy, the Big Easy Awards Committee chair, a person who deals with uh, all of the awards, and also next to her was Alicia Vance, a vintage hairdresser, uh, last but by no means least, rounding out the segment, C. Patrick Gendusa from Loyola University, who borrowed my headline to close it out. Those of you who had a good time, I did. I, I know that theater, you know, it's hard to find sometimes on Mardi Gras, but it was a wonderful day, and, and even despite the weather. Let's move on to Memphis. No, not literally to Memphis. Let's move on to the show Memphis, is at the Sanger Theater opens this Tuesday, and it runs, uh, you know, through next weekend, a five-time Tony Award-winning musical. I've been waiting for this show for a long time. I have to tell you, the music is wonderful. It's by David Bryan, who wrote also the lyrics along with Joe DiPietro, who you may remember him from a little show called I Love You, You're Perfect, Now Change. Um, the setting is in Memphis in the 1950s, and a white disc jockey, Huey Calhoun, uh, loved music and then tries to essentially strive to find a way to combat injustice and prejudice. Tickets for Memphis are available at Ticketmaster in the Sanger Theater through Sunday, March the 16th. Coming up at Southern Rep, the night of the iguana. You know, if it's March, we know that Tennessee Williams New Orleans Literary Festival will be here. It can't be far off. And there are none other than M.A. Hayes on the right and Mike Harkins. Uh, they're going to be doing this as part of the Art Club presentation, the, uh, what used to be the Michelopolis Studios. And uh, again, that'll be um, running through uh, the uh, 6th of April. Okay, thank you so much, Alan. And now it's time, though, for our Artist Spotlight. Tonight we are featuring local artist Robert Guthrie, who sadly passed the Thursday before my Guthrie was known for his vibrant watercolors of local scenes and was a renowned graphic artist. And the first one we're shown will actually be Carousel and the second Preservation Hall Jazz. And it's a part of the jazz pieces he had recently been working on. His work is available exclusively at Gallery Renard on Royal Street in the Quarter. Visit GalleryRenard.com for more of his work. He will be missed. And don't forget to visit WYES.org to see our online calendar. New Orleans Magazine's quiz queen, Julius Street has a question for us. Last time, Tom Knox gave us the names of the two parades, which are two of Carnival's prettiest that march on Lundi Gras. And we're talking about Proteus and Orpheus. Now, tonight's question. 
These two St. Tammany Parish towns sit near the opposite ends of the Chifuncta River. Name them. Email your answers to steppingout at wyes.org. Our prize is a Louisiana Life magazine subscription, a gift certificate for Vianne's Tea House, offering their culinary gourmet tea experience for two. Tonight we have a t-shirt as worn by staffer Bob Fortenberry with the message, Chairman of the Bordeaux. And now, thanks to our folks at wearablevegetables.com. And now for our picks, Bonnie. Uh, don't forget to come to the lunch and the book signing at the Royal Sinester on the 12th. That's okay. the next one. After. All right, great. Thank you. Poppy? Nobody knows about this but me. Happy hour at MoFo. Brand new Monday through Friday, 3 to 5 p.m., 3 to $5 plates of delicious things and cheap cocktails. Okay, Errol? Well, because Mardi Gras is later than usual, that means the gap between Mardi Gras and the Irish parades is smaller than usual. So March 14th, Molly's at the market. Uh, uh, Irish Parade, and then the 15th, the, uh, the, the Irish Channel Parade. Okay, Alan. I wanted to mention that Elm Fest, the Elm Theater has vacated their uh, previous uh, headquarters on Julia Street. They're going to look for a new home, and they're going to have Elm Fest on March the 23rd, which is a Sunday night. It's going to be a fundraiser. All right, thank you. And now my picks, author John Kemp and artist Alan Flatman signed their brand new book, The Paintings of Alan Flatman. That's tomorrow evening from 5 to 7 at Bay Books on Main Street in Bay St. Louis. And the historic New Orleans collection, they their concert series starts, Concert in the Courtyard, that's back featuring the High Club of New Orleans. It's next Friday at 6 p.m. at the Royal Street location. Admission is $10. And you can go to hnoc.org for more information on that. And looking ahead, the Harry Thompson Center for the Homeless, their gala fundraiser will be held Saturday, March 15th at 7 p.m. at Jesuit High School. Call 273-5547, extension 135, or email vjudis at harrythompson.org. Or more information, click on news at look at that harrythompson.org thank you all very much good night and now more from leslie caste and jefferson turner bye-bye thank you this is a very special song to me and i tell you a little bit about why it is in my show someday i'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me Troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops. That's where you'll find me somewhere over the rainbow. Blue birds fly, birds fly. Oh, Oh. 